Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Linux and ThinkPads. Recently, I have gotten interested in the topic of Linux, and as time passes, my interest in Linux grows only larger, making me join some communities along the way. My point is that it's very common to see this trend of combining Linux with ThinkPads. So imagine this. These are two niche topics that seem to have a cult following and even oftentimes combined to create an even smaller niche. An even smaller cult following. What is Linux? Uh, I'd just like to interject for a moment. What you are referring to as Linux is in fact GNU Linux. Well, Linux is a free and open source operating system. It is mainly used for servers, but nowadays it's being adopted by many new users as a desktop operating system. Some of the main reasons why people are starting to use Linux is mainly mainly because of Microsoft's dominance over the operating system market. Why do you need to install updates? What updates? Some more fucking spyware so the NSA can keep watching what I'm doing? Looking at my dick pics and watching me jack off? Spying on me? Obama? You fucking... I'm a racist! You made me a racist! Lynx is superior in many aspects such as privacy, having freedom and control over your operating system, and not the other way around, uh, having lower hardware requirements, and of course, customizability. And due to its lower hardware requirements, that means that it runs better than Windows on older computers. So rather than throwing out your old laptop in the trash, just install Linux on it. To many people, Linux is simply known as that one operating system with the scary black terminal. And I'll tell you the truth about the terminal. Those who only need to use their PC for online banking, mail, printing, surfing the internet, will never run into problems. That is, that is from my experience. But there is a group of people which want to use their computers to its fullest potential, which I fully understand. They call themselves power users, and uh, they know absolutely every nook and cranny about their systems. They most likely achieved this knowledge from installing Arch Linux manually. Most times, these power users are the ones to show off the most and use the terminal most of the time. Another reason why the terminal is so prominent in Linux videos is because there is no user interface, and if you know, user interfaces are always prone to being changed. And by using the terminal in tutorials, it is more likely to last the test of time. But there's no reason to be scared of the terminal, since it is just a black window where you type in commands. The computers went wrong when you made them for <laughs> That's when it went wrong. Okay, that was the that was the big that's when it went wrong. It's like how many people it's like, oh it's a command line. Eh fuck you man. White people don't mind it. Okay. The white people are like, yeah it's a command line. So what's your what's your point? The <laughs> are all like, no, it's we it's we don't like the command line. Here's the difference in a white person in <laughs> do you like the command line? Okay, you're <laughs> fuck you. Get the fuck out. So, what are ThinkPads? In this section, I will be speaking about the older ThinkPads specifically. ThinkPads are laptops mainly geared towards businesses. Originally created by IBM, meaning that they were built with quality and innovation in mind. They are infamous with the red nipple that is prominent in many, if not all, ThinkPad laptops. Historically, Businesses that needed laptops bought these laptops in bulk. They were probably being offered a discount or something by IBM or Lenovo. Uh, and that means that these businesses had lots of these laptops. 
but they did not always have employees that could use these laptops. So these same laptops are being resold nowadays on secondhand websites like eBay, Craigslist, or OLX, and whatever local website you can think of. Depending on where you live, these laptops can cost from $30 to $200 or even more with good hardware. Meaning that there are a lot of laptops either brand new or almost brand new in terms of quality. Why ThinkPads exactly? Why not buy a Raspberry Pi? Also, it, it, it's kind of a weird uh, comparison to make. Raspberry Pi versus a ThinkPad. Like, these are two totally different things. A laptop is a small computer with a screen, right? The Raspberry Pi is made for educational or experimental purposes where you can put code on the Raspberry Pi and make it execute this code. So yeah, it is kind of a weird comparison to make, but I think it's still worth it to bring it up. First off, what is a Raspberry Pi? Well, in my own terms, Raspberry Pi is just a computer squeezed into a single circuit board, which is supposed to be cheap and for experimental or educational use, which doesn't have any peripherals. And in some cases, the Raspberry Pi might actually be even more expensive, that's without even factoring the small monitor that is separate from the Raspberry Pi. So. Whenever I think of a Raspberry Pi, the only case in my mind for it would be to act as a Arduino or to act as a server. Though, this may be due to a lack of experience and knowledge with Raspberry Pi and Arduino on my end. Why combine Linux with ThinkPads. One of the reasons would obviously be dumb videos like the one I'm making right now. I am actively exposing more and more people to the greatness that are ThinkPads. The downside of that being that, because there are lots of videos with lots of views, that means that there is more demand for these laptops. And if you know the basic supply demand model, that means that in recent years, the ThinkPads have increased in price. They usually use or used to use generic hardware that is almost always compatible with Linux. Another reason why ThinkPads get praised so much by the Linux community is because they just work. It's easy to install Linux on them, unlike a MacBook. <laughs> Good luck with that. MacBooks are literally made to not be changed. Every part in a MacBook is proprietary, each part is soldered in, so it just makes the process of changing or modifying a part all that much harder. The way I think of MacBooks is that they're like those laptops that you get from work running a lockdown version of Windows that comes with lots of limitations. But even those are better than MacBooks because they're not using Mac OS. Some of them can actually be changed to use Linux, giving you way more freedom than the obviously locked down version of Windows. One downside to ThinkPads is that most of them have Intel management, which is just a small extra processor that has network access and it can look at what you're doing. Basically, it's an Intel backdoor to spy on you. The only way this can be avoided is through using Libreboot. And Libreboot is compatible only with older Intel products or, to be more specific, older Intel processors. Since ThinkPads are so cheap most of the time, my hypothesis is that people buy these cheap but still powerful laptops in order to test out Linux to its full capability on these laptops, instead of risking a loss of data on their main machines or their main computers. Older ThinkPads have traits that appeal to the kind of people who would use Linux. 
such as simply being highly repairable, maintainable, uh, and sturdy. In fact, Linux users praise older ThinkPad so much that whenever they find another product of high quality and a bang for the buck, as they say, uh, they will call it the ThinkPad of X, the ThinkPad of cars, the ThinkPad of watches, things like that. Just what's the best product in a different sphere? So my closing message to the viewer would probably be it doesn't matter all that much if you have some other laptop that is not a ThinkPad, but think of your laptop as a gateway to your Linux journey. Use your laptop to learn Linux without risking your data on your main machine.